Hey everybody, we are teaching Gravity Sketch, and this episode is all about the primitives. And believe me, in Gravity Sketch, these primitives get very sophisticated indeed. So, primitives refer to simple standard shapes, like cubes, cones, pyramids, that type of thing. Something the computer can draw for you very quickly, a little more accurately than you might be able to do with your own two hands. All of these primitives, if you just choose it once and start drawing, it'll give you the same primitive you've been using before. So if you've been making cubes, it's just a quick way to get more cubes. If you tap it again, now we get our choice of what shape are you going for. Now all of these shapes have several methods of drawing them, several modifiers, several ways of editing them, as well as they all use two hands to create them. Because when I bring a cube into space, not only do I need to know where it is, but we also need to know roughly how big. So if I choose a cube, when I start drawing with my dominant hand, even if I'm not touching anything, you can see how the location of my other hand is what determines the size. It does not determine the angle. We're just creating this cube from scratch. Let go or... Actually, yeah, just let go and we've got a perfect cube in that size. If I'm making a cube and I pull the other trigger, now I can actually describe the size and shape of this cube. How tall, maybe I want a skyscraper or maybe I want a pizza box. What shape of cube do you want? It's still gonna have six sides, 90 degrees. But now I've got a more rectangular shape controlled by both hands. So with your uh, control hand, your palette hand open, it'll be a perfect cube. Palette hand trigger, you can shape that cube a little more closely. Now all of our primitive shapes are gonna work that way. One hand open is the perfect version. Both hand trigger lets you control the modifications you want. Go away and go away. So that's the cube and that's pretty much how the cube works. Now, whenever we've got one of these primitive shapes, whether it's the perfect version or it's the non-perfect modified version, if you go to edit this, it's not gonna give you your usual control points and edges. That's only for subdivide objects. A primitive object, it's gonna give me three colored arrows. And those arrows are how I change this box. So it's always going to be a 90 degree six-sided cube. But when I edit, see these colored arrows. Let's bring it close. We have a green one, a blue one, and a red one. Grabbing and moving these arrows is how we change the size and shape of our cube. So these primitive objects, we can't just do anything we want. We're primitive, we're simple. So we have these control markers to modify how exactly do we want this primitive. In this case, holding your other trigger does nothing because it's all about maneuvering the arrows. Check it in when you're done and now we have a modified cube. I'm gonna shrink him down and put him over here. And leave them there for now. Cube. Shape. The rounded cube is just like it name would imply. It's a cube with rounded sides. It's still not subdivided in that you can't do everything with it. It's still going to use those arrows for modification. I don't think we need to save this guy. He's just like a cube. But round. The other one on the same level is our torus or donut, depending on how hungry you are. Now, with one hand open, the torus is a very fat torus. He's a very fat donut, just bigger or smaller. Both hands triggered. Now we can control not only the radius, but also the thickness of the torus. So I can have a bicycle tire, or I could have. A bagel, whichever type of circle, torus shape you're going for. 
Now with these guys, again, we can't do anything we want. With these guys, we've got green arrow and blue arrow. There's no red arrow because this is a circle. We can't have one, this is not an oval, this is not an ellipse, it's a perfect circle. Thickness and radius are all we're gonna be able to change. So I'm gonna make that a little bit smaller and put up here with my cube. Porous as another of these perfect primitive shapes. Cones and pyramids. Pyramids are four-sided, or four sides and a bottom. Perfect pyramids are going to be the same on each surface, same side. So if I'm going to go for a pyramid with one hand open, perfect pyramid. If I do it, let's put you up here. If I do it with both triggers, now I could have a pointy pyramid or a fat pyramid, depending on what type of shape you're going for. You'll notice you can even make it rectangular instead of square, that type of thing. So depending on the, on the pyramid you want, we do have that type of control. Cones are just like pyramids, however, they're round instead of square. This means that a pyramid Square, a pyramid that we edit, will have all three, red, blue, and green, so we can stretch it different ways. The cone is only going to have two, radius, perfect circle. So if I edit the cone, we have green and blue, red doesn't come into it. No ellipse, sorry, different type of shape. I'm going to keep our pyramid, but we won't use the cone. There we go. Next on our hit parade of primitives is the sheet. Simply a two-dimensional rectangle. Sheet, flat panel. Again, it's only a primitive, not, I can't go diagonal and rhombus and trapezoids. If I edit this, I can go up and down and left and right. I can't even do a thickness because this is a flat plane and not a cube. You want a pizza box, you use a cube. We won't bother keeping our plane. Actually, we're going to do something fun with our plane in a little bit. I'm going to put our plane over here. I'm going to edit it so it is nice and wide. And I'm even going to change the color. There we go. We'll put that there. We'll put it right there. Since we don't use banner ads, nothing's gonna cover it up. You're welcome. So now we've got our primitive shapes. The next on our hit parade is the sphere. I bet you can guess what the sphere is like. Now, if you hold down the trigger on a sphere, you can make your ellipses. You can make your ovals. It's still going to be a round, smooth shape. So with just one hand triggered, perfect sphere of any size. Two hands triggered, ovals, ellipses, pill shapes are okay. You're in my way. So what I'm going to do, whoops, get rid of you. I'm going to make a normal perfect sphere, make it nice and tiny and put it over here. Make it a little tinier. Put it up in here. Okay. Primitive shapes. The pill is basically a sphere on either end of a cylinder. Pill shape. You can guess how it got its name. And again, with editing it, because there's a radius, there's only one measure to radius by. Thickness of cone and length of pill. The sphere, you only get one because it's bigger or smaller sphere. If you do, I should remember that, back in our sphere, if you do make an oval shape, if you edit the oval shape, then it does give you all three arrows. So you can make it any distortion that you want. If you make it a perfect sphere, you only get the one because it's a radius. Edit the perfect sphere. Oh, well, I guess you can get the others if you distort it. If you only grab one, then I guess you're gonna distort your sphere. Get your sphere, just grab it and make it bigger or smaller. That's the easiest way. Grab the sphere, 
Make it bigger, it's still a perfect sphere. Smaller, it's a better sphere. It's a tiny sphere. You get the point. Moving right along, we've got circles, uh, spheres, and pills. Cylinders, just what you would expect. One hand open, it's the overall size, but it's still a perfect circle cylinder. Same rough dimensions overall. If you use both hands, now you can distort it different ways so that the narrowness is separated from the width. It's still going to be a perfect circle. But like with cubes, it allows you to make pizza boxes instead of perfectly uh, symmetrical diameter shapes. As always, if you give it the edit tool, it's going to give you up and down. It's going to give you in and out. But this one is one of those radius tools, so it's not going to let you make a deformed cylinder. It's always going to be a perfect cylinder. Still on screen, still on screen. Okay. This primitive, I call it a star. I don't remember off the top of my head what its official name is, but you can see how it makes these wonderful pointy shapes, gracefully curved pointy shapes. If you edit these shapes, you get the natural all three ways of stretching it. That does indeed allow you to do, where's my red, here's my red. Very tall, skinny, there we go. Spindle type of shapes. Now, if you use both hands when you create them, you can make them different stretch different ways. And you'll notice if your hands get too close together, everything just sort of rounds out. Because technically this is an, a square turned inside out. So it's gonna have the same corners, but everything behaves as it's curving through itself. Fascinating little shape. Standard editing applies red, green, blue. Now you'll notice text. We've actually got that letter T, text, as part of our primitive tools. So I'm gonna to change to a very different color and I'm gonna give myself text. Now when you choose text, let's get you out of the way for a moment, it's gonna bring up a keyboard. Text, keyboard, your fingertips. See how there's blue pointers on my fingertips? You can just tap them on the keyboard. And type whatever message you want to have on the keyboard. It stays where you created it. So even if you move things around, that keyboard is locked right there. Fortunately, I got it on screen. X is if you got it wrong. Check creates that piece of text as an object. There we go, now we're talking. So you can see how we can take these, manipulate them, get it different colors, get different materials, that type of thing, to use in our thing, whether it's as a label or as actually part of the model itself. Now if I go to edit this, edit, you can only retype it. You can't twist the letters. You can't bend them and distort them. This is not a subdivided object. I can retype the message. Tapping font will even give you different fonts you could put it in. Let's use that one. Do it. And there we go. So the uh, text primitive just creates a keyboard for you to slam in whatever you want to say and creates that as an object. Editing the object only means retyping the object, not a subdivided object. If you go to edit, you'll only ever get the keyboard. Keyboard. Now with most of these objects, not all of them, but many of these objects, you can turn them into a subdivided object if you need. So for example, my torus. Right now if I edit the torus, I can only use those cardinal green and blues. But if I take my torus 
And in the editing mode, it's got the subdivide button. Subdivide. Now I've got all the control points. Now I've got edges, I've got faces, I can distort this thing however I want. I can do fall off, it's now fully subdivided. Bear in mind, you can't go back. So if you decide you want it to be a torus after the fact, you would have to actually undo everything you've done to get it back to its original shape. And you'll notice undo doesn't work for the subdivide part. It is no longer primitive. It is now too sophisticated to work with our primitive rule set. Bonuses, disadvantages, make sure you only activate subdivision if that's really what you want to do with that object. Now, if you look closely, since I didn't activate smoothing in my subdivide object, you can actually see all the faces, all the corners, all the edges. So let's edit, give me some subdivision levels in here. Now it's got a nice smooth contour. But now I could also do something like, uh, let's grab this guy, edit this guy, give me some good fall off here. So I can stretch it deform it. Now it's a fully customizable subdivided object. Instead of my original primitive torus. Let's get a better color for the torus. Back to the purple. Modified torus versus primitive torus. So not all of them can go subdivide. If I go back to that main primitive menu, you'll notice I've got a subdivide option up here in the corner. If I activate it, several of these pieces go gray. So I could not subdivide, create subdivided a cone, for example. The cone always needs to be a perfect circle. If I put in a cone without subdivision, and then I go to edit, Cone doesn't even have subdivide as an option. If you want something that's not a cone, what I could do is take a pyramid, make it as distorted as I want. There we go. Now I'm going to take this. Well, that's it. It's, sub, it's the best I got. Because there's no subdivide, I can't just take it and smooth it down. Instead, I'd be better off doing something like taking a cube and subdividing that and then manipulating it so it's the pyramid I want. Not all primitives can subdivide. Sphere, what's interesting is the sphere, many of the round ones can. So I could take a sphere, subdivide it. Now you can see how many control points it's got. But that'll allow me to turn it into an egg or a head, or something like that. Start primitive, and then modify from there. We may even do a lesson about that, how to start from a primitive and get specific objects. But for now, that's what you're gonna be working with. Either it's a subdivided complex object, or these simple primitive shapes. But most of the time, these primitive shapes give you the good building blocks to get started. Text is indeed considered a primitive shape. I hope this helps. I hope this gives you some ideas of things for you to do on your own. Let us know in the comments if you have questions or if things aren't working right. Let us know if you have suggestions for upcoming episodes as well. We don't mind entertaining your ideas as episodes. So I'm going to add one more little subdivide text here. Subscribe. Thanks for joining us, everybody. I hope you had a lot of good fun. Let us know if this inspires some creations. Go ahead and link us in the comments below. We don't mind showing off your work. Have fun, everybody.